Hello everybody, this is Yiji and welcome to the first episode in what will hopefully be a very long series about Project Espa. Boy am I excited for this one. I'm actually writing this script the same day as I uploaded the story video, so my spirits are very high. Okay then, today I want to start off by talking a bit about my rules and design goals for Espa and consequently this series as a whole. I think this is the most important thing to do so I can give direction to my project to start out with. Obviously, these can all change over time, but from previous versions I think it will absolutely be helpful to start out by laying down the law so to speak. That does mean we're not going to do any actual world building yet today, but this is really important to start with. that though, I need to talk to you about the name of this series. I'm sticking with Project Espa for now, maybe it doesn't need much elaboration at all, but I want to explain myself a bit. As far as I can tell, it's almost been a trend in the world building, but especially the Spec Evo community for a while now, to go for titles like Project Insert Name, examples being Project Mira and Project Rose, among many others. While I could go nag about originality, I really like this trend. It's a good trend because including the word project highlights that it's in the development stage, brilliantly yet simplistically. I have already used the name Project Espa since at least 2020 after leaving the CWP, so it will be best to stick with it. At least, I don't see any reason to mix it up at this stage. What I will say though is that Project Espa is a working title. I do fully intend to give this project a proper name later on, However, that's for the distant future as I see it. For the more foreseeable future, Project Espa will be the working title that this series will be known as. Alright, so then, rules. What do I mean by rules? By rules in this context, I mean the standards I'll be holding myself to when world building this. These may of course be subject to change and updates over time, but they will serve as helpful guidelines to me when we get started. Okay, so let's get the big one out of the way first. AI is banned in this series. I know in this modern age there exists no shortage of tools that can allow you to basically fully automate the process of creating a world. I'ma have none of that here. Sure, it's easier, but I don't think it's fun or creative. So I'm going to hard pass on using any AI tools in this project. I do know this series could go on for quite a while and it's hard to predict what the online landscape will look like in many years from now, but barred from me being taken hostage by ChatGBT, I will try my best to support human efforts where I can. Similarly to AI tools, there also exists a ton of tutorials and spreadsheets today that really can aid you in the world building process. World builders today are kind of spoiled with these in a sense, so for this series I wish to avoid making heavy use of these where possible. Or at least to not default to using tools such as conlang generators or the wordsmith. Not because I think they are bad tools, but because I really want to have fun doing it myself. So then, what about our goals with this? I feel like I might really disappoint some people here, but my rule is going to be... So, what do I mean by that? I come from a background of what I would like to call hard realism, which is the kind of world building you might be the most familiar with, and the kind you would see on Artifactions channel for example, where you use hard science to make sure everything is mathematically tweaked to be as realistic as possible. Basically ensuring your world could exist under the laws of our world. And while that's absolutely impressive, I think it can also be limiting in a sense. I think I first ran into this conundrum when designing the lunar system of ESPA. It goes without saying that astrophysics is not exactly a forgiving subject, and at the time I learned the hard way that the idea I had for ESPA's moons could simply never exist in reality. Now a lot of famous worlds ignore hard realism altogether, examples being every FTL series out there, and I think that's a more engaging way to world build, because it appeals to the imagination rather than to science. A good example of this might be magic systems. In our world, 
magic does not exist. But does this bring down the magical fantasy world? No, not at all. It's fun and imaginative. Now does Espa have a magic system? Now that's something I'm thinking about in this context. Hard realism worlds could never have a magical system, and I think that's a shame. Thinking ahead, I do not want to constrain myself by using science as the sole arbiter of what I can and can't add on Espa. Now of course I will try to make the most realistic world I can, because I think that's an exciting challenge. But in this day and age of world building, that's a very much moving goal. And there is always gonna be people with much more knowledge about these things than me. And you know what? That's cool. But I really want to prevent backtracking as much as possible. What I would really hate for this project is to get stuck in a cycle of going back to fix the third moon of my Jovian endlessly, so I can never make progress in other areas. Instead, I think a much better way to approach this is what I would like to call soft realism, where we will slightly adjust our aim. Of course I'm going to try to have everything be as realistic as possible, but I'm not gonna aim for a perfect scientific accuracy. Instead if we get things to about 95% realistic, that will be good enough for me. How exactly I'm going to implement this, we'll see as this series goes forth I guess, but I think this is a good baseline that protects believability without limiting creativity. Espa has always struggled with so far is an actually cohesive plotline. For the most part I have just been having a lot of fun with world building, so it has never really been a big focus. I kinda want to change that now, 11 years after starting this project. Lol. I don't think this goal will become immediately relevant until we get to doing the actual human history of the world, but it's something I want to keep in mind and certainly later focus on. And for myself the goal will be to try throughout this series to elaborate on why I add certain things for lore reasons. And if I forget, you can remind me in the comments to that. And my final goal is the most simple but important one. Just have fun with this. I think the most important part about continuing this project for me is to continue having fun with it. I mean I have done so for 11 years, so I'm sure this one will work out, but it's important to mention nonetheless. A lot of world builders I have seen lose sense of their most basic goals as their projects go on, and I think that's a real shame. So let's have fun first and foremost with this project, alright? So I think with this and the last video explaining the history of Espa, which by the way you should go check out if you haven't already, we're all clear to start this series off properly in the next video. If you have any questions about these rules and goals for the project, please put them down in the comments below. I love getting comments and hearing what you people actually think about it, because that also serves as an important check for me if the things I add are, you know, actually liked or disliked. Alright everybody, so I think that's gonna do it for this first episode. I hope you enjoyed that and are as excited as I am to get this series properly started. I know this series might be off to a bit of a slow start here and there, but I promise, if you stick with me, we're gonna build something amazing here. So if that is something that sounds interesting to you, stick around and subscribe. This has been GG Online, and I will catch you again in the next one. 